Hi, Robins. I'm here with Lumpy and Mr. Mouse. Would you like to hear the last chapter of Toys Go Out? It's called, It is Difficult to Find the Right Birthday Present. Let's see what this is about. The little girl's birthday is in a week. She'll be seven. There are big plans, a party, a cake, a pinata, and friends are coming over. Seven is old, says Plastic, as she and Stingray look out the window one day while girl is at school. Will she be a grown-up soon? No, says Stingray. How can you tell? You're not a grown-up until you're at least eight, Stingray says. How old are you? Plastic wants to know. When you're eight, you can drive a limousine, Stingray explains and you can brush your teeth without being reminded, and you can read all the words in the dictionary no matter how long they are. You have lots of things, you have lots of ways to buy the chocolate that you want and poofy dresses and cool soccer shoes, plus anything blue that strikes your fancy, but not when you're seven. How old are you, asked Plastic again. That doesn't matter, says Stingray. What matters is how much stuff I know. People who know a lot of stuff don't need birthdays. I'm having a party for my toys, the little girl tells her best three friends, in the morning before the kids come over, with my tea set and a real cupcake. Everybody is invited. They begin whispering as soon as the girl leaves for school. Who's included in everybody, Lumpy wonders. Just everybody, says Plastic. Does it mean me? Of course. Does it mean the toy mice? I think so. What about the rocking horse? He can't sit at the table. Oh, um... Plastic rolls side to side, not answering. Everybody is us three. The toy mice, the one-eared sheep, explains Stingray. That's who's invited. That's all. That's all, says Lumpy. I feel bad about the rocking horse. Well, maybe the horse can come, says Stingray. We, would have, we could have the party over in his corner. What about Frank, wonders Lumpy. What about Tuck Tuck? Frank has to stay in the basement, Stingray says. Tuck Tuck probably won't even want to come, says Plastic. It's not a towel kind of thing. She likes to do stuff with other towels. I think she'd want to, said Lumpy. She's the little girl's towel. If, you're in, if you invited one towel, you'd have to invite all of the towels. The girl has to keep the party down to a manageable size. What are you giving her, Frank asked Lumpy, one afternoon when the buffalo was having a maple syrup washed off of him. Giving who, asked Lumpy? The girl. You should give the girl a present if you're going to her birthday party. I don't think she expects one. You have to get her something, says Frank. It's manners. Lumpy is worried now. What can I get? Well, what does she love the most? I don't know, cries Lumpy. Ugh, says the dryer, interrupting. She wishes she could go to the party, says Frank. We never go anywhere. He drains out his water tank and starts the spin cycle. It's a lonely life. True, says Frank, but we have each other. As soon as he is clean and dry, Lumpy calls Plastic and Stingray to a meeting on the windowsill. We have to give her a present, he announces. It's manners for birthday parties. Ooh, says Stingray. I know. Let's give her an airplane. And a ball gown. And a big screen, flat screen, giant jumbo television. And some gummy bears. She'll be so surprised. Great, says Plastic. Now, where do we get those things? I don't know where. Don't worry about that, says Stingray. How much money do we have? Plastic thinks for a moment. We don't have any. Let's get the ball gown instead, or do we need money for that too? We need money for everything, answers Lumpy. You're right, cries Plastic in distress. And even if we did have money, we can't get to the store because we're not eight yet and we can't drive. What does she love the most? asked Lumpy. That's what we should get her. New plan, announces Stingray. We're finding a present in the house. The night before the birthday, Stingray, Stingray only pretends to go to sleep with the little girl. She flops down onto the shaggy rug and organizes a serious present hunt. Don't come back without a quality gift, she commands. Plastic and Lumpy standing on her tail and flapping her flippers. Plastic is assigned to search the living room. It's mainly grown-up stuff, but she finds some books that look interesting, and she found a potted marigold. She can't move them, though. She doesn't have arms or legs. She bounces back upstairs and asks the toy mice to help her. They do, but they're quite crabby about it. They insist that their games names go on the card if the books or the marigold get chosen to be the present. Lumpy's in charge of the basement. There's not a lot down there. 
He finds a can of creamed corn among cardboard boxes and carries it upstairs in his mouth. His jaw feels stiff by the time he gets to the top. Stingray searches the closet and she almost gets squashed by a pile of sweaters that fall on her head. She bangs her flipper out the door, but she does come up with a blue t-shirt, a purse with snaps on it, and a hairbrush. When the items are piled in the center of the shaggy rug, the toys sit all together thinking. The press, best present is what she would love most, says Lumpy. Is there anything here? She likes blue, says Stingray. The blue t-shirt is good. I don't think it's, I don't think. I think it's you that likes blue, says Plastic. Everyone likes blue, says Stingray, because it's the best color. But she already owns that shirt, says Plastic. She wore it yesterday. She owns the books, too, points out Lumpy, and the purse, and the marigold. And the hairbrush and the corn, says Plastic. This is terrible, says Stingray. Why didn't I think of this? She's going to be angry. She's going to cry because she's got no present. She'll throw pillows at us and call us names and never invite us to parties again. I don't know about that, says Plastic. Why not? Because we're her best friends. She said so at show and tell. So? So she wouldn't throw pillows at her best friends. If we're her best friends, says Lumpy, we should know what she would love most. You're right, says Plastic, we should. But Plastic doesn't know, and Stingray doesn't either. They sit there in silence for seven minutes and 22 seconds. Then, in a flash, Lumpy thinks he knows. His idea is such a good one that he waggles his tail stump with excitement and claps his bus buffalo forefeet together before scampering off in search of wrapping paper. On the morning of her birthday, the little girl wakes up to find two funny-shaped packages and one perfectly round package sitting on the windowsill of her room. Two are tied up with green ribbon, and one is tied up with blue. Neither of the grown-ups is awake yet. Girl gets up in bare feet. Presents, she cries. She unwraps the small round one first. What a beautiful, beautiful ball you are, she says, hugging Plastic. Plastic wants to bounce, she's so happy, but she keeps still so the girl won't see how excited she is. The bumpy package is next. Next. Oh, it's you, sweetie, sweetie buffalo, cries the girl as Lumpy comes out of the tissue paper. Lumpy doesn't mind the sweetie, sweetie thing, even though he is tough, because he gets several extra kisses. Finally, the little girl unwraps the flat package. You even used a blue ribbon, she laughs, squeezing Stingray hard. My favorite. I told you so, whispers Stingray to Lumpy. It's the best color. The birthday party is a great success. Tuck Tuck is invited after all. In fact, she was the tablecloth. The girl laid out her china tea set in front of the rocking horse in the corner. There's a nosegay of flowers and she serves real tea. There are cups and saucers for everyone, even the toy mice. In front of the girl is a special cupcake decorated with white frosting and a blue rose. She cuts it with a butter knife. Happy birthday, Lumpy, she says, serving him a slice and a cup of tea. You know it's your birthday too today. Lumpy's surprised, but he chuckles to himself. Happy birthday, Plastic, says the girl. Am I already one, wonders Plastic. Stingray looks up to, at the girl, expecting to be next, but the girl's busy. She's serving tea and cupcake to sheep and Plastic and Rocking Horse and Tuck Tuck and the toy mice. Three birthdays all on the same day, whispers Stingray. That doesn't seem right. Who cares, says Plastic. I like having a birthday, says Lumpy. Is this banana cake? She sniffs her piece. Everyone has cake but Stingray. I don't think the girl knows what she's talking about, whispers Stingray. That's all I'm saying. I think it might be vanilla cake, says Lumpy. Will there be seconds? It's not like I care at Stingray. I don't need a birthday. And now, announces the little girl, a very special happy birthday to my very extra best friend, Stingray. She cuts off the piece of cupcake with the blue frosting and serves it. Lumpy, I got you when I turned five, then you plastic when I turned six, but I've had Stingray since I turned four. She reaches over and scratches the ear ears where she scratches where the ears would be if Stingray had ears. I hope you all have the be best birthdays in the world. Ooh, cries Stingray, leaning into the scratch. It's my birthday too. Happy birthday, says Lumpy, and she gave me the frosting rose. Because it's your birthday, cried Plastic. Yes, it is. Didn't I tell you? Here they all are at the birthday party.
Late last night, late that night, when Stingray and the little girl are supposedly asleep in the big high bed, Plastic and Lumpy hear a song coming from up there. Stingray diddly o, birthday diddly e. Who's got a birthday? Stingray, Stingray, diddly, diddly, that means me. If Lumpy stands on tiptoe, he can see Stingray's flippers waving around in a dance. There's Stingray dancing around on the bed. He's very happy he has a birthday too. The end. So, what did you think of this book, Toys Go Out? Did you like the adventures of Lumpy and Stingray and Plastic and Tuck Tuck and the sheep with one ear and the little mice and Frank, the washing machine and the dryer?